What up, guys? This is Chivo Guys. Back here again with another achievement guide. Today, we're going to be focusing on Aboriginus. This game was published by Zitalon and developed by the Flying Islands team. This game has 10 achievements and offers 1,000 gamer score. Overall, it's going to take about 20 to 30 minutes to get the full completion. On top of that, it's only $4.99. So right when you start the game, you're going to get the Rise of the Hero achievement for 100 gamer score. This game is pretty simple. It's a 2D side scroller. The Aboriginous people are indigenous people from the Australian mainland. They are the tribal people that are from the islands just off the coast of Australia. The title of the game puts a little twist on the spelling of the word. It uses a E instead of a I when spelling Aboriginous. Anyhow, just wanted to explain a bit about what the game is about and some backstory behind the name. So as you can see a couple seconds ago, I pulled up the upgrade screen. We have six different areas that we can upgrade. There is an achievement related to maxing out each area. You have to upgrade that skill three times to max it out. So when you start the game, you want to be killing as many enemies as you can. The enemies are pretty easy in the beginning of the game, making it easy to rack up some easy experience points. Those green little temple things, those are checkpoints, so if I were to die right now, it would spawn me at that checkpoint. Now, I'm showing you guys my actual playthrough, so this is in real time, how long it took me to get the full completion. I believe this video is going to be around 20 minutes long, so it shouldn't take you any longer than 30 minutes. All we have to do is beat the game and then get the achievements for maxing out the six different skills. So to upgrade all six skills, we would technically need 18 skill points because it takes three to max out each skill. However, I have some good news for you guys. We do not need to collect that many skill points. If we did, we'd probably need to do around three playthroughs. What we are going to be doing is saving up three skill points. And then once we get to a checkpoint, we can go ahead and move a little past that checkpoint, upgrade and max out one skill, get the achievement, and then kill ourselves. And then that's going to spawn us back at the checkpoint, reversing the upgrade. We're going to move a little bit ahead of the checkpoint so we don't accidentally um, get the checkpoint over again once we upgrade the skill. And then we're just going to rinse and repeat that until we max out all six skills. Might sound complicated now, but I'll show you guys in a bit. You're going to end up encountering these bird enemies. As far as I know, right now you can't kill them um, because we can't throw the spear yet. Technically, we could probably use some of our upgrade points and get some sort of long range attack or projectile attack. But like I said, we're going to save up our three experience points. So if you get an experience point, don't spend it. And if you happen to encounter a flying enemy that we can't attack quite yet, it's no big deal. Just walk under them or jump over them and we'll skip them for now. But other than that, we want to kill all of the chickens that we can. The chickens will pretty much always attack you when you're trying to attack them, but don't worry, they don't do too much damage, and most of the time when you kill a chicken, it drops some health for you to pick up. If you're wondering where your health bar is, it's the red circle on the upper left hand side of the screen. In terms of what the green bar is, I'm not too sure. I think you might be able to run or sprint if you press a button and that might be your stamina bar, um, but I don't know, I never ran or sprinted when I was playing this game, I never found the need to. As I mentioned before, we're just skipping the bird enemies for now. Now, in about a minute or a minute and a half, we're going to end up in a part of the game where we mount a chicken. We're going to get an achievement for 100 gamer score for doing that. You guys will see what I'm talking about here shortly. For now, I also want to point out when you kill an enemy, um, it'll give you a little notification like that one saying new level. That's how you know if you gained an experience point. I believe that's my second experience point so far, so just one more to go and then we can go ahead and use that um, checkpoint method to upgrade all six skill sets. This game really shouldn't be hard for anybody, I mean as long as you know what you're doing, this is a pretty nice and easy completion. None of the sections of the game are too hard to get by, and none of the enemies are hard either. Even the last boss is really easy to defeat. Maybe it's really easy just because... Towards the end of the game, we don't even need to defeat the enemies. We can simply jump over them or race past them uh, just to complete the game. On top of that, the checkpoints and the save system make it quite forgiving. So, you know, if you die or you fall down one of these pits of death, 
you are just going to respawn to the last checkpoint, which are the little temple looking things with the green light. Now we're coming up on that section that I told you guys about where we're about to ride the chicken. This is a section where we're going to need to jump up and down while we're riding the chicken. If we run into anything, we're going to die and it's going to start us back at the beginning. There we go. That's our chicken rider achievement for 100 gamer score. Chickens are the best mounts. What a random game. I doubt, I highly doubt, I don't even think it's possible that the aboriginous people were riding chickens, but it's a video game. You definitely might not get through this section on your first try. You gotta make sure you get all those jumps right and the timing right on that big jump. I didn't get it right on the first try. I just edited through my footage. So you guys didn't even know. Thought I did it in one take. But you know I always keep it real with you guys. I edited it. I think it took me like three tries to pass that part. No big deal. Like I said, it nothing is too difficult. There are sections where you do need to duck down or else you will die. You can also attack uh, the flying enemies while you are mounting the chicken. There we go. Past that level. Now we have a checkpoint right here. And now it's going to introduce the snake enemy. Which is just another type of enemy in the game. However, it's the easiest type of enemy to defeat. Because you can hit it once and it'll die. So we're going to start racking up a lot more experience points here. Hopefully we'll be getting the third level soon. So we have three experience points. And then we can go ahead and get those six achievements. Now we're going to be introduced to the shaman shortly. It's right up here in the hut. Now the shaman wants a flower. They say that if we find the flower for them. That they will teach us the shaman's craft. What this actually does is it unlocks the other three skills. Now at the start we only have the ability to upgrade the three skills on the left hand side of the screen. To be able to upgrade the three skills on the right hand side of the screen. We need to get that flower for the shaman so they can upgrade us. We also get an achievement for giving the flower to the shaman for the upgrade. Don't worry this isn't a side quest or anything like that. This is a natural part of the game. So after you defeat those Rhyhorns, they're going to offer you a lot of experience points. This is where I ended up leveling up for the third time and got my third experience point. So now I'm looking forward to the next checkpoint where we can go ahead and do that checkpoint method to get all six skill related achievements. We're going to go ahead and dodge that owl for now because they still haven't upgraded to get any long range attacks. We're going to be coming up on another Rhyhorn here. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it just really looks like a Rhyhorn. If you guys don't know what that is, that's the Pokemon uh, that looks kind of like a Rhino. Definitely looks like a Rhyhorn. If you think so, let me know in the comments. So we're just going to keep advancing. Kill a snake. Kill a snake or two. Know what I mean? Alright, cool. So this is the checkpoint that I was talking about. Um, you guys might have to wait till your next checkpoint. You might get at a checkpoint before. Depending on how many enemies you kill and how many experience points that you get. But for now, I'm going to get the checkpoint. You want to make sure that you stand to the right of the checkpoint because if you walk back and you walk over it, it's going to save it again. It's going to checkpoint it again. So I went ahead, walked to the right. I maxed out the first skill. That's going to give me the strong one achievement for maxing out the power. That's 100 gamer score. Next, I'm going to max out the agility. That's the swift one achievement for 100 gamer score. Going to walk to the right. And now we are going to max out Stealth. That's going to give me another 100 gamer score for the Silent One. After you get that third upgrade achievement, you want to make sure that you kill yourself. Because we want to reset the skills so we can use the three skill points again after we get the upgrade. If you don't kill yourself after that third upgrade, then you're going to walk over the checkpoint and you're going to save the fact that you use those three upgrade points. So... Make sure that you die after you get that third upgrade achievement. Other than that, we're taking the flower back over to the shaman. Make sure that you grab the flower. The flower was located right next to that last checkpoint that we went to. Now that we have all three experience points, we don't really need to defeat any enemies. So we can go ahead and just run past them or jump over them. We're just going to skip them and we're going to go back to the shaman. Once we give the flower to the shaman, it's going to upgrade the other half of the skill sets. The other three skills. And then we are going to unlock the Shaman Powers achievement for 100 gamer score. Boom, boom, boom. Shaman Powers getting upgraded. Let's proceed with the game. 
So we're going to go back over to that checkpoint and we're going to do that same checkpoint method. As you can see, I unlocked the other three skills and I still have the three skill points. Going to head back over to that checkpoint, going to do the checkpoint method and we're going to unlock three more achievements for 300 more gamer score. We're almost there. Dodge the little golden owl. And watch out for the Rhyhorn. A little exclamation point will pop up if he's about to charge you. Pretty easy. You know, I probably could have just talked for the first three minutes of this video and then let the 20 minute gameplay roll. But I feel like it's beneficial to give you guys commentary throughout the whole video. That way you can play my video at the same time while you're playing your game. Otherwise, you gotta watch my video and then spend the same amount of time getting it done yourself. So, if you guys appreciate the commentary, let me know in the comments. So right now, I'm doing the same thing as before, but now I'm doing it for the three skills that we unlocked on the right hand side. Each one's going to give you an achievement for 100 gamer score. So just make sure that you upgrade the skill three times, get the achievement, and then fall into the pit. That respawns you with your three skill points, and you're going to rinse and repeat. Now, once you get all three achievements, you can go ahead and upgrade these skills that you actually want to proceed with. I recommend maxing out the strength, which is the one on the upper left hand side. And then next, we are going to upgrade the Crow Spirit, which is our new projectile attack. After you upgrade your character, you can go ahead and save it. You're going to need to use the Crow Spirit attack to get through that wall. Now, the rest of the game is going to be pretty much a breeze. We are pretty much beast mode in terms of attacking enemies now that our strength is maxed out. And that's if you want to fight them. For now, you're going to see me just dodge a lot of these enemies. I'm just going to jump over them or run past them for now. You might see me kill an enemy here and there just to get some life. Now, we're a little more than halfway done with this game. We're getting there. There's about 8 more minutes left. I believe we have 2 levels after this one. Shout out to this developer, Zitalon. It seemed like they totally filled in for Radalaka in December. They dropped a bunch of games that were $5 that were easy completions. They made Aboriginous and Mushroom Quest, which are really easy completions, about 20 minutes each. They also uh, recently released Cold Silence, which I'm not sure if anybody has completed it yet, but that one is actually a one-off. Um, I think that one's pretty hard. I don't think anybody has a guide on that one yet. They also released Pixel Gladiator, I think in November, which is another easy completion. I think that one's about one to two hours. And then the next game they're releasing is Castle of No Escape, which you can actually download a free trial for, so you can try to get some of the achievements. I think it's like a 24 hour long trial too, so you can actually get the full completion. I think uh, some people have already got it done. So that one's looking like it's going to be pretty easy too. I'll probably be releasing a guide for that game as well. Now, right now, we are in the second to last level. In this level, you do need to free four people from cages. The captured people aren't too hard to find. If you're having any trouble, just make sure that you follow along with the guide to make sure that you find all four of them. The first one is going to be located right at the next checkpoint. Once you get the checkpoint, the person in the cage is pretty much right there. Now, you cannot open the cage with a projectile attack. You actually need to hit it with your spear. So just keep that in mind. It's not that big of a deal. But anyway, here's that checkpoint I was telling you guys about. The person in the cage is right after the checkpoint. Pretty hard to miss. That is unless I guess you don't know you're supposed to be looking for the people in cages. Because the graphic on the upper left hand side of the screen that shows the one out of four people is pretty small. So I totally understand how you might miss it. And if you don't get all four people it won't let you proceed to the next level. That was the second person in the cage. If you need to, you can always pick up some life. Those are the little bubbles with the red cross in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and scoop one up. There are a ton of enemies in this level. To me, they look like battle toads. I don't know why, but I'm getting battle toad vibes off of them. So we're going to dodge all of these battle toads. Now, if any of them are easy to miss, it's that one right there. So make sure that you get that third caged person or caged aboriginous person. Now in this area, I'm going to go ahead and climb to the top and just walk past this projectile enemy. Once again, just dodging all of these fools. 
going to climb high so maybe it's a little easier to walk past all of these guys now if they attack you they will try to bat you and i think they kind of bat you kind of far we just got another checkpoint and then the fourth one is right after that checkpoint so now that we have freed all four people from the cages we can go ahead and proceed to the end of the level now it will let us proceed to the last level i'm pretty sure the last level is the shortest of them all so don't worry we're getting there we're about three minutes from getting this full completion just keep jumping vine to vine with tarzan george of the jungle vibes and there we go you got to use right trigger to walk through that door and now we are on the last level so we'll just proceed with this final level we're just going to dodge all of the enemies this is going to introduce the bat enemy and these like rock enemies i don't know what you call them probably like golem type of enemies i'm not sure but they do this earthquake strike and they're really easy to dodge because they're very slow so you don't really need to worry about um, them killing you or anything like that and i guess worst case scenario if they do you just go back to the last checkpoint but you can even walk right through them they don't hurt you if you walk through them so most of the time i'm just walking right through them i'm killing the bats here and there just with you know some random projectiles trying to get some random life you do have some platforming areas got to make sure you don't fall down the mortal combat pit of death and then i think this is the last achievement right here we are running up on the end of the game. This is going to be the final boss. You are late, hero. The ritual has already started. The power of the spirits is protecting the ritual, and only a powerful shaman can stop it. What? It can't be. When did you learn the shaman's craft? It can't end this way. Don't. No! <laughs> Sorry, guys. You guys can't skip the dialogue, so I thought I'd go ahead and voice it over for you. So now we finally get to fight the boss. You have come again. Cough. My end is near and yours too. Prepare to die. This boss is pretty easy. All you got to do is jump over the fireballs. He's going to Hadouken you a few times. Jump over them. He's going to do an earthquake strike. And this is where you mess him up. Once he's red, you're just going to attack him over and over. He's going to get some fire. And he's going to give you a warning that he's going to Hadouken you again. Just dodge the Hadoukens. And then he's going to introduce a second attack which is some fire coming to the floor, kind of like some scorpion Mortal Kombat. So just dodge a few of those. And then he's going to do the Earthquake Strike again. Mess him up a few times. Then he's going to Hadouken you again. Jump over those. Dodge the Scorpion Strikes. We are just going to rinse and repeat this until we defeat the boss. He's getting ready to Earthquake Strike me again. Jump over those. Attack, attack, attack. I'm mixing in the Spear Attack and the Projectile Attack to try to get his life down quicker. Just need to dodge a few more attacks, and then I'll be able to finish him. This boss is pretty easy, guys. You guys should really have no issues defeating him, especially if you went ahead and used your upgrade points. There we go. The Shaman was defeated. Evil is stopped. Make Sky Islands great again. 100 gamer score. That is our full completion for Aboriginus. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in if this video helped you out. Please leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.